Hello everyone, in the previous video we have seen what is the difference between the combinational logic circuits and sequential logic circuits. Even we have discussed regarding what are the steps that will be always used in order to design any type of combinational logic circuits. As I already told you, uh, a combinational logic circuits are nothing but the combination of logic gates connected in some way so that they can perform one particular task and the output of this circuit depends only on the present values of inputs. For example, assume that I want to perform addition of two numbers. So, when I want to perform addition of two numbers, I can make use of the combinational circuit called as adder. When I want to perform subtraction of two numbers, I can make use of a circuit called as subtractor. For example, we know that in a digital system, the systems are going to always process the data in the form of binary, but the users, they are not able to understand the binary data. So, we need a circuit that is going to perform the conversion between the binary code to other formats. So, that is done with the help of a circuit called as decoder. The reverse of this conversion that is any type of data can be converted into binary data with the help of a circuit called as encoder. And for example, in some cases you will be having multiple inputs. Among multiple inputs, I want to select one of the input and give it as output. In such situations, we are going to make use of a circuit called as multiplexer and the reverse operation of multiplexer will be performed by a circuit called as demultiplexer. The other details of all these combinational logic circuit, how we are going to design them will be discussed in their respective videos in detail. So, in this video, we will be discussing regarding the combinational logic circuit called as adder. When I say addition, assume that I want to perform addition of two 4 bit numbers. I am going to take A is equal to 1011 and B is equal to 0011. So, this is a decimal that is 2 power 0, 2 power 1, 2 power 2, 2 power 3. So, 8 plus 2, 10, 11. So, this is the binary equivalent of a number 11 and this is the binary equivalent number of number 3. So, now I want to perform addition of these two numbers. So, when we perform addition, we always start from the rightmost bit. So, you can see in the rightmost position, we are having two 1 bits. So, in a binary addition, when you are performing 1 plus 1, I am going to get sum as 0 and carry as 1. So, same thing I am going to put over here. So, for this particular uh, combination, I am going to get the sum as 0 and I am going to write a carry over here. So, in this particular position, you can see we have 3 1s. So, when we have 3 1s in a binary addition, we will be getting sum as 1 and even I am getting carry as 1. So, in the next bit position, we have 1 0 0. So, when we have the combination as 1 0 0, here yeah, sum will be 1 and carry will be 0. In a next bit combination, you can see we have 0 1 0. So, for this combination of values, I am going to get the sum as 0, uh, sorry sum as 1 and I am going to get the carry as 0, which we are going to ignore since it is a last bit in this particular addition. So, now when I want to perform the addition of these two 4 bit numbers, first you should understand how do we add 2 bits or we can say that in order to perform the addition of two 4 bit numbers, I have to first design a 
logic circuit which is going to perform the addition of two bits our agenda is design a logic circuit which is going to perform addition of two four bit numbers but straight away we cannot go into the design of this circuit because it becomes little complicated so we are going to learn this step wise in the first step what we are going to do i am going to design a circuit which is going to perform the addition of only two bits so this is done with the help of a circuit called as half adder whenever we are interested in adding two bits i can make use of a circuit called as half adder when we are interested in adding two bits along with a carry if you see in this particular example for this rightmost bit we don't have any carry value so i am having only two bits but when we move towards this side i am going to get the three bits among these three bits the first two bits are input values and this one it is a carry from the previous bit so next we have to learn how to design a circuit which is going to add two bits along with the carry input or in other words we can say that we have to design a circuit which is going to add three bits so to design a circuit or the circuit that adds three bits is called as full adder once we know how to design a half adder and how to design a full adder then we can start designing a circuit which is going to perform the addition of two four bit numbers so now let us try to understand the design of half adder as i already told you in the previous video whenever we are designing any combinational logic circuit we will be following few steps among them here first step is i have to first identify the number of inputs and the number of outputs and assign them some uh, variables or some symbols we can say so now when i want to add two bits so we can see when i have two bits i'll be having how many input values will be having two input values so that means i am going to get two input variables i am going to name them as a and b so when we are performing the addition we are getting sum and carry so we will be getting two outputs so i am designating sum with a symbol as yes and carry with a symbol as c so now the next step will be i have to fill this truth table to establish the relationship between the input variables and the output variables so already in the first module you might have learnt how we are supposed to decide the number of rows in a truth table so the number of rows in a truth table are decided with the help of this formula where n is the number of inputs so, so in our case we have two inputs so when we have two bit two inputs 2 power 2 will be 4 so that means we'll be getting four combination of input values so the four combination of input values are 0 0 0 1 so once we have decided the number of rows in the truth table now i have to fill the output columns so in order to fill the output columns you should know the binary addition in a binary addition we will get four combination 0 plus 0 means our sum value will be 0 and carry will be 0 when we have 0 plus 1 sum is 1 carry is 0 and we have 1 plus 0 here yes, sum is 1 and carry is again 0 when we have 1 plus 1 here yeah, sum will be 0 and carry will become 1 so same combination we are getting even in our truth table so let us fill this truth table so 0 0 sum is 0 carry is 0 0 1 is 1 carry is 0 1 0 is 1 carry is 0 1 1 is 0 carry is 1 so once our truth table is ready our next step will be 
I have to obtain the simplified Boolean expression for the output variable sum and carry. So, as we have two input variables, I have to make use of a K map for two variables. So, your K map for two variables is very simple, which will be having four boxes and the combination will be A bar A and here B bar B and we will be getting 0, 1, 2, 3. So, let us fill the values for sum. So, you can see for sum we have 0, 1, 2, 3. You can write these numbers for simplicity. So, here I can uh, identify that the one entry for sum is uh, 1 for mean terms 1 and 2. So, I have to write here as 1, 1 and the remaining values will be filled with 0. If you observe the K map, already you have learnt uh, several problems on this K map in the first module uh, in order to learn how to make the groups. So, if you observe this particular K map, we can see that there is no way to group these ones. So, we are going to group them as isolated ones. So, and let us write the corresponding mean term. For this entry, I am going to get it as A bar B and for the second entry, I am going to get it as A B bar. Then in a similar fashion, let us try to find out the simplified Boolean equation for carry a bar a b bar b 0 1 2 3. You can see there is only one entry for the mean term 3. So, I will make this entry as 1. The remaining values will be 0 and the corresponding carry will be c is equal to I can just make it as one isolated one and I am getting it as what a b. Okay. So, now if I want to write the Boolean or sorry logic circuit for this one. There are two ways of writing this. In the first way, we are going to use the simple sum of products representation. So, if I want to represent it for carry, uh, for this first term, I have to take a AND gate and for that, your yeah, input will be A dash and B and next and term will be taking A B dash and since it is a sum of products, I am going to take the output from these two AND gates and it will be connected to a OR gate and this is the final equation for our uh, output variable sum. In a similar fashion, I can use just a simple 1 and 8 to obtain the logic circuit for our carry. We can represent this sum and carry by making use of other gates also. If you observe this particular equation of sum, this a dash b and a b dash is equivalent to a x or b. So, now I can construct a half adder by making use of a XOR gate and a AND gate. So, I am going to take one XOR gate. For this XOR gate, the input will be A and B and this will be sum and your carry will remain as it is. I will be having a AND gate. For this AND gate also, I am going to take the inputs from same input lines that is A and B, then this will be giving us the carry. So, as you can see designing a uh, half order is a very simple thing. We are just going to get a small truth table with only two variable K map and uh, even drawing of logic circuits is very easy. I hope you have understood this topic. 
with this as background let us try to now design uh, the next combinational logic circuit that is full adder. As we know that the disadvantage in a half adder is it cannot add the carry from the previous bit, it can add only 2 bits. If you want to add the carry from the previous bits then we have to make use of a circuit called as full adder. So, in order to design full adder again as usual we have to follow the same steps. I have to first construct a truth table. So, as I already told you a full adder will be adding 3 bits, a 2 bits will be from the inputs and a third bit will be the carry in from the previous level. So, I am going to take 3 variables A, B and C in. This is the carry in from a previous bit as I have shown you in the previous example 1011 0011 for first uh, bit addition I am getting the sum as 0 and carry as 1 here. So, now these two are the input bits from input variables A and B but this particular value is coming from the previous level. So, this will be called as carry in from previous level. So, again when I add this I am getting 1 1. So, this is 1 and this 1. This is the carry in again from the previous bit. So, now I have to design a full adder which is adding the 2 bits of inputs along with 2 bits of input even it should be able to add a carry in from the previous bit. So, that we are designating it as C in. So, obviously, when I have 3 rows I mean sorry 3 input variables for 3 input variables as we know 2 power 3 I am going to get 8 combination of values ok. So, let us fill the 8 combination of values 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1. I hope already you are familiar with how we are going to get these combination of values. Obviously, they are the binary equivalent of the numbers from 0 to 7. Uh, let us now try to fill the output uh, variables, the output variables will be again 2, sum and carry. So, if I am taking sum e as yes and carry as c, there might be a confusion. So, I am going to take it as carry out ok. So, now let us see what combination of values we are going to get this for full adder when we are trying to add 3 zeros. So, obviously, a sum will be 0 and even carry out will be 0. Then next when we want to add 0 0 1 sum is 1 there is no carry. When I want to add again 0 1 0 or we can say if I have only 1 1 entry sum is 1 carry is 0. If I have 2 1 entries I will be getting sum as 0 carry as 1. If I have 3 1 entries, I will be getting sum as 1 as well as carry as 1. So, you can keep these as guidelines in filling this particular table. So, 0 1 0 sum is 1 carry is 0. 0 1 1 as I said 2 ones means sum will become 0 carry will become 1. 1 0 0 sum is 1 carry is 0. Again 2 ones sum is 0 carry is 1, 1 1 0 sum is 0 carry is 1 and finally, when we have 3 ones yes sum is 1 as well as carry is 1. So, once our truth table is ready again I have to follow the same procedure I have to construct the K map in order to obtain the simplified Boolean equation for sum and carry out. So, uh, as our uh, truth table is having 3 variables, I have to construct a 3 variables k 
came up here it will be a bar a and b bar c bar b bar c b c b c bar will be having 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so now let us identify the one entries for sum to fill the table easily let us give the numbers for these mean terms so that we can fill it in a easy way so if you observe there is one entry for which mean terms 1 2 4 and 7 1 2 you can see there is a one entry for one, 1 2 and this is 4 and this is 7 1 2 4 and 7 the remaining entries will be filled with 0 so, if you observe the K map, there is no way to group these ones. So, I am going to get the uh, Boolean expression for sum as I have to group them as isolated ones. So, for this first one, what will be the min term I am getting? A bar, B bar, C plus for the next min term, a bar B C bar plus for this mean term I am getting A B bar uh, then C bar plus for this entry I am getting A B and C. In a similar fashion I need to construct a K map to obtain the simplified Boolean equation for carry out A bar A we are getting B bar C bar B bar C B C and B C bar 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 identify the one entries uh, for C out you can see I have 4 entries here, here first entry is for mean term 3, then here second entry is for your mean term 5, third entry is for your mean term 6 and your fourth entry is for your mean term 7 and the remaining entries should be filled with 0. So, now we can make the groups here. So, if you observe there is no way to uh, make a quad only we can do the pairing here. So, I can make this 5 and 7 as one group ok. For this particular group I am going to get a carry as carry out as what will be the value? I have to keep this A as it is and in these two boxes I have to remove the complemented form. B bar B is moving from uncomplemented to uncomplemented form. So, it will be eliminated. I will be left out with only C. So, I am going to get the term as A C plus in a similar fashion I can make the next group as this one. So, in this which term is moving from uncomplemented to complemented form? A is moving from either complemented to uncomplement or uncomplemented to complement form. So, A will be cancelled, we are left out with here B C plus a next grouping will be for these two. Uh, in this case, it is going to uh, <coughs> uh, C is moving from 
complement uncomplemented to complemented form. So, we will be left out with A and B. So, now if you want to uh, if you want to design the logic circuit for this particular Boolean expression, we can make use of the um, simple sum of products form. So, let us construct the logic circuit for this one. I am going to make use of the first AND gate which is taking three inputs. I am getting A bar, B bar, C. Here second term is one more AND gate. I will be taking A bar, B, C and your third one is taking again three inputs which is having the values as A, B bar, C bar. Then your fourth one is taking A, B and C. Since it represents the sum of products format, I am going to take a OR gate with 4 inputs and the output of all these AND gates will be connected to the input of OR gate and this will represent the term or this will represent the equation uh, sum. So, in a similar fashion, we can construct the logic circuit for carry. So, the logic circuit for carry will be having again three AND gates. It is having three AND gates. So, first AND gate is taking the value A and C. Second AND gate is taking B C and your third AND gate is taking the value as A B and again even this represents the sum of products form. I am taking a 3 input OR gate and this will represent a carrier. Okay. So, in this way we can design a simple full adder which is going to add the 3 uh, bits or 3 binary bits in which 1 bit is taken from the uh, carry of the previous level. Uh, this cannot be done with the help of a half adder. So, in order to overcome the disadvantage of half adder, we have designed this full adder. Okay. Even it is possible to design the full adder using two half adders. So, let us see how we are going to do this. I hope you have uh, uh, got this topic because using this half adder and full adders, we are next going to design the 4 bit binary adders. Only if you have the clarity of these concepts, then only you can understand the uh, design of your 4 bit uh, adder. So, let us see how can I design the full adder using two half adders. We know that here uh, half adder can be constructed using one XOR gate and one OR gate. So, let us take that. I am going to take one XOR gate and one for this the input will be A, B. Then here we have a AND gate. For this again the input will be coming from A and B. So, this is your first half adder. Your next half adder is again having 
one more XOR gate. Okay, for this XOR gate, we are taking the input from this XOR gate, and one more input will be coming from C in. Okay, so if you see this circuit. At this point, we'll be having A X or B, and at this point, we are getting A X or B X or C, which is sum. We will see. Can we deduce the equation for this sum? What we have got in the design of full adder from this particular equation? We'll be seeing uh, shortly in this video. then after this we have one more and gate okay for this and gate we are getting one input from this point okay and one input from this point means we'll be getting a xor b and another input is coming from this c so this will become into c so now in order to get a carry i have to make use of one extra or gate we know that the half adder is constructed using one xor gate and one and gate when we say full adder full adder is made up of two half adders along with the two half adders i need to use one extra or gate so i am using that extra or gate over here and this or gate one input is coming from this and gate and one more input will be coming from this and gate so that means what is the equation we are getting at this output link we are getting a x or b into c plus since it is a or gate and one more input is coming from this line means it will be plus av so now in order to prove that the circuit what we have designed that is the full adder using two half adder is correct we have to take the logic expressions that we have obtained for sum and carry and we have to simplify those expressions to get back our original sum what we have designed in the uh, in this video previously so let us take this one a b c plus sorry a bar b bar c plus a bar b c bar plus a b bar c bar plus a b c so now what i have to do i have to simplify this expression to check whether i'll get that a x or b x or c so if you see in this particular in these two terms uh, i can take a bar as common when i take a bar as common we are left out with b bar c plus b c bar plus in these two terms i can take a as common a is common so i have to i'm left out with b bar c bar plus b c so now you can see a bar this is nothing but b x or c so i have to write here as b x or c plus a this equation or this expression is nothing but b x not c okay so in the next step we can see a bar b x or c plus a we know that your x not is complement of x or we can write this as b x or c whole bar so now if you observe this equation a bar into some value that is b x or c again plus a into b bar it is again a, a simplified expression for 
XOR gate. So I am going to get here as A XOR B XOR C which is nothing but the equation that we have got in our logic circuit of uh, full adder using two half adders. So now but you stop madad beda antira antheli sir idanna sumne fix Venuta ma'am, il bani sir. Idan hindi fix maan vatar. Idi bada ke gula bidit nanda. Itta gibe ka gatta na? Hindi hindi fix maan vatar. Now let us see whether the carry out equation what we have got for this logic circuit is it correct or not. Uh, so to do that let us take the equation C out is equal to A plus A x or B into C plus A B. So now what we have to do is I have to simplify this equation using Boolean laws and check whether I can get back this equation or not. So, we can do vice versa either we, we can take this and we can deduce this 
or we can take this and we can prove that we can deduce this. So, I am going to expand this A x or B is nothing but A dash B plus A B dash into C plus A B will be as it is. Then in the next step we are multiplying or we are taking C inside A dash B into C plus A B dash into C plus A B. So, now check is it possible to take any uh, variable as common in these terms. So, if you observe in these two terms I can take A as common. So, I am keeping my first term as it is A dash B C plus in the next term I am taking A as common. When I take A as common we are left out with B bar C plus B. In the first module you have seen in Boolean laws if we have a variable and a complement of a variable with another variable I can replace this with B plus C. So, what I am going to do is A dash B C plus I am writing uh, A as it is then I will replace this with B plus C. So, again what I have to do I have to A dash B C plus A B plus A C. So, now again check is it possible to take any term as common. So, if I take these two terms I guess in these two terms I can take B as common. So, if I take B as common B and this is A dash C plus I am getting A plus A C and again applying the same uh, Boolean law complement of a variable and a variable itself is present with another variable. So, that can be replaced with B into A plus C plus A C. So, now if I take this inside I am getting it as A B plus B C plus A C. So, now you can check the terms what we have got A B is equivalent to A B then we have B C then we have B C here and we have A C here we have A C over here also. So, that means whatever logic circuit we have drawn uh, to construct a full adder using two half adders is giving us the uh, correct uh, output. So, with this as background actually we started designing this half adder and full adder in order to design a 4 bit adder. Once we know the, de the design of these two adders now we can attempt to design a 4 bit adder. So, let us see how we are going to do that. So, we want to design a 4 bit parallel adder. This means we want to design a logic circuit which is going to add two 4 bit numbers. I am taking the numbers as for example, A is equal to uh, as I have taken in the beginning of this video 1011 and I am taking B as 0011. So, what we are going to do now is we are representing A is equal to for each of the bit we will give the symbol separately. So, I am going to give the symbol for this as A naught, A 1, A 2 and A 3. So, that means it will be A 3, 
a 2 a 1 a naught and similarly for b I should write b 3 b 2 b 1 b naught. Now, we need to add these two numbers. So, let us see how do we design a 4 bit parallel adder to add two 4 bit numbers. So, you can see here first I have to add 1 plus 1. So, these two I need to add. In order to add 2 bits, we know that I can make use of a half adder. So, once I add these two, I am getting sum as 0 and carry as 1. As I already told you, when we want to add the carry from the previous bit with the 2 inputs, then we will be having totally 3 inputs to add. So, I cannot add these 3 bits using a half adder. So, that means what I have to do? I have to make use of a full adder here. Okay? So, that means for this first bit rightmost 1, I can make use of 1 half adder. Okay? Then to add these 3, I need a full adder. Then when I add these 3, I am getting sum as 1 and again what I am getting, I am getting, getting carry as 1 here. So, here also again we are getting 3 bits. So, add this 3 bits, I need one more full adder. So, similarly, in this particular example, I am getting sum as 1 and I am getting carry as 0. But here you may have carry as 1 also or we can say that in other words, here also I am, uh, I should be able to add 2 input bit bits along with the carry in from the previous level. So, even to add this 3 bits, I need 1 full adder. So, that means I need how many full adders? I need 3 full adders and 1 half adder. Okay? But in order to maintain the consistency, what we do? Instead of using 3 full adders and 1 half adder, we use even at this point also a full adder and what we do? We assume that the carry into this position will be 0. Okay? So, I hope you got this point. Whenever we are interested in adding 2 4 bit numbers, at the first level or in the rightmost bit, we will be having only 2 bits to add. When we want to add only 2 bits without a carry, I can actually make of use of a half adder. But to add the next 3 bits or the next 3 levels, uh, I need 3 full adders. Instead of using 3 full adders and 1 half adder, what we are doing? We are using 4 full adders. That means, whenever we are interested in designing a n bit parallel adder, whenever we are interested in designing a n bit parallel adder, there are two ways to do it. I can use either n minus 1 full adder and 1 half adder or I can use n full adders. Okay? So, to maintain the consistency or to make the design simple, we are going to make use of 4 full adders in order to design a 4 bit parallel adder. So, let us see what is the circuit for this. So, obviously, when we are designing 4 bit uh, full adder, sorry, 4 bit parallel adder, I am not going to write this complete logic circuit. So, if I am writing this complete logic circuit 4 times to represent 4 full adders, uh, the circuit will become more complicated. So, what we do? We are going to make use of a block diagram. So, block diagram of a full adder. So, your block diagram is represented with a rectangle and within this we are writing it as full adder F A. Okay? 
So, obviously, for this first full adder, as we start addition from the rightmost bit, as I have already told you, we are taking the bits as A3, A2, A1, and A0, and B will be B3, B2, B1, B0. So, first terms what we are adding will be what here? A0 and B0. Okay. For this, the input will be A0, B0, and one more input will be a carry in which is C0 and it will be set to 0. Okay. Then to add the next bit, to add the next bit, I need to take one more full adder. For this one more full adder also, I will be having totally three inputs. One is A0, sorry, one is A1 and second one is B1 and if you observe, if you observe, when I add this 1, 1, I am getting sum as 0 and carry as 1. So, that means, this carry in, it is generated from the first full adder. Okay? I hope you got this point. Whenever we are adding this rightmost bit, I have added 1 plus 1 and this carry in is assumed as 0 for simplicity. And when I add 1 plus 1, I am getting sum as 0 and the carry generated from this full adder will be given as input to the next full adder. Okay? So, what we are doing? The carry should be generated from this full adder and it is given as input to the next full adder and for this I am giving the name as C1. I hope you have got this point. We are adding the first two bits or the rightmost bits and the rightmost bit sum will be generated. We are giving it the name as S0. Okay? Then the carry generated from this is given as input to the next full adder which is named as C1. In a similar fashion, I have to add the next or third bit. So, what we are going to do? We are going to take one more full adder and once I get one more full adder, I am going to name them as A2 and B2. Obviously, if you observe in this example, if I want to add the third position bits, I should get the carry in from the previous full adder. So, I am going to take the output from the previous full adder and this will be named as C2 and what is the sum generated is here it will be S1 and here it will be S2. In a similar fashion, I have to take the last final full adder. For this, again the carry will be generated from the previous level okay? and the input for these full adder is a3 and B3 and the carry will be named as C3 and the sum generated will be S3 and the final carry generated will be C4. Okay? So, you can see uh, the logic diagram for the 4 bit parallel adder, even it is called as a ripple adder. The reason why it is called as ripple adder is the carry generated from the first full adder. It has to move till the last full adder in order to get the final output for our circuit. But this full adder is having certain disadvantages. Let us see what is the problem with this logic circuit. So, now assume that I want to add the same two numbers. I am taking A as 1, 0, 1, 1. Then I had taken B as 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay? So, now we know that C naught is 0 initially. So, in the first step what we do? 
we always start adding from the right uh, rightmost side. So, what is the value available with us? 1 1 0. So, that means what I am going to get? I am going to get sum as 0 and I will get carry as 1. Okay? So, now in order to perform the addition by this second full adder, the second full adder should wait until the carry is generated from the first full adder. Only if the carry is generated from the first full adder, then only the second one can start its processing. In a similar way, if I want to add uh, or the addition must be performed by the this full adder, it has to wait till I get the C2 value from the two full adders. So, whenever we are using this uh, parallel adder, there is a lot of propagation delay in order to arrive at the final answer. So, now what is the meaning of this propagation delay? Propagation delay means whenever we provide some inputs at the gates, the gates will take some time to settle the inputs and give the output. So, that will be called as propagation delay. So, now we know that the carry must be generated or propagated from the first full adder till the last full adder to get the final answer. If, if we are using this, uh, this circuit that is the full adder using two half adder in order to design this 4 bit parallel adder, we can see that this C in, the C in value it has to propagate through one AND gate and one OR gate. We are not bothered about sum here, the carry is propagating. So, it has to go through one AND gate and one OR gate. So, that means there is a propagation delay of two gates for one full adder. And here we have four full adders. So, four into propagation delay of each full adder is we are having two gates. So, eight gates. So, in order to arrive at the final answer, we have to wait or we have to uh, take the propagation delay of 8 gates. So, in order to solve this issue, there are two ways. One way is I have to make use of faster gates with less propagation delay. Okay? That is one solution but the physical gates are having their some uh, threshold capability. Beyond that, they cannot work. Another way is we will design a carry look ahead adder in which uh, the carries of all the full adders will be available simultaneously for all the full adders. It means in this particular uh, design, we have to wait. For example, if I want to get C3, I have to wait till C1, C2 is generated, then C3 will be generated. So, now what we do? We are going to increase the complexity of the logic circuit in such a way that all the carries are available for all the full adders simultaneously. So, that can be done with the help of a carry look ahead uh, generator. Uh, which will be discussed in the next video. Uh, I hope you have understood this logic. Thank you for watching the video.